Our dear viewers, to welcome me to your homes, of course, figuratively, as I bring you thought-provoking discussions on this platform. But enough about me, let's get started with the show. Of course, my sign language interpreter this particular morning will be none other than Lensa Odingo. We talk about the three-day protests that are geared to start from Wednesday, Thursday till Friday. What will be the cause of action from the Azimio leaders as well as the government as both institutions have maintained their stands. But before we do start, I want to give you a little bit of context of what we'll be discussing this particular morning. Our viewpoint question will be, should the government engage the opposition in a dialogue? Let me repeat that. Should the government engage the opposition in a dialogue? You can reach out and of course get in, get in touch with us through our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1, of course. But before I introduce my guest this particular morning, I want to give you a little bit of context from what I'm going to show you from you in terms of the article of the Constitution, a little bit of a background to give us context of what we'll be discussing this particular morning. You, may, you might have heard the Azimio leaders talking about Article 37 of the Constitution. The article clearly, as you can see on your screen, states that Article 37 of the Constitution of Kenya provides for the freedom of a peaceful assembly and states that every person has the right peaceably and unarmed to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petition to the public authorities. That is from the Constitution of Kenya. That is the article that the Azimio leaders have been alluding to. But not just that in terms of the article itself. Let's look at an article that goes on with the uh, Article 37 of the Constitution. It's all about the Bill of Rights. Now, under the Bill of Rights, the Public Order Act, Section 5, that has been stated clearly by the National Police Service, led by the IG himself, that is Jafet Kome, you have to seek authorization from the police. The Article Subsection 5 clearly states that, now, no person shall hold public meetings no person shall hold public meetings or a public procession except in accordance with, provide, with the provisions of Section 2. Now, subsection 2 of that Act it states that any person intending to convene a public meeting or a public procession shall notify the regulating officer of such intent at least three days, but not more than 14 days before the proposed date of the public meeting or procession. That Public Order Act, Section 5, goes hand in hand with Article 37, that is what informs the men and women in blue and the men and women in blue under the Public Gatherings Act. I have a little bit of more under that particular section. I'll be telling you if the police will allow the Azimio procession to go on and what is likely to happen. Of course, to bring this matters into perspective, my guests already in the studio I already have the Honorable Charles Nguna, the Mwingi West Member of Parliament. Moshima, welcome to the set. I'll be conversing with you in just a bit. Of course, as I told you, the viewpoint will be Show the government engage the opposition in a dialogue. You can also join in this particular conversation through our social media platforms on KBC Channel 1. That is what we'll be conversing this particular morning. But of course, let me just get to, uh, to introduce to you Moshimua. Moshimua, maybe the first question will be to you as we're gearing up for those three particular days. What should we expect from Wednesday to Friday? given that there is a lot of anxiety to that particular procession. Uh, let me first of all welcome the viewers and uh, thank you so much for the invitation. And uh, we are anticipating uh, chaos. Things will be messy. And uh, it is high time. And even I stated on Saturday when I was worshipping in Mwingi, there is need for dialogue with the president. A leader who doesn't listen will eventually end up being psycho, or being around with the leaders who have got nothing to say. Uh -huh. And uh, that is why I've been agitating for dialogue. That is why I have been calling upon everybody to sit down. Uh -huh. I, first of all, we had a very good initiative, uh -huh. the, the dialogue we had initiated before. But it seemed that uh, the people who assigned the responsibilities to negotiate mm -hmm. and also to come up with the solutions that were on the problems facing Kenyans, they were not ready for the task and uh, they politicized the whole issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we need sober people, especially the religious leaders and uh, other experienced and people who have seen it before to come up and have a solution mm -hmm. on how we are going to bring the cost of living, mm -hmm. on solution how we are going to have a peaceful country. Mm -hmm. We have to, to, to admit that we are not doing very well uh, as a nation. Okay. If you look at even key indicators, macroeconomic variables, mm -hmm. Kenya, we are losing almost everything. The, the exchange rate, Kenya shillings, is not comparable to all the major world currencies. Okay. The issue of interest rates, we are soaring, and uh, we don't have any conducive environment to do the business in this country at the moment. Okay. And uh, that's the only way to sorting out issues of uh, high cost of living, mm -hmm. uh, high rising unemployment rate, mm -hmm. and uh, the collapse in the economy mm -hmm. can only be sorted out through that way. Mm -hmm. So this dialogue, this structured dialogue, need people who are mature, mm -hmm. people who are serious, people who don't think of Azimio, people who don't think of Kenya Kwanza, people who think of the country itself. Mm -hmm. So. I don't believe, and I think it was an accident to identify the negotiators of the, 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 the dialogue. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we need people who think of Kenya, but mm -hmm. not who think of coalitions. Okay, Moshima. Yes. Let me take you back to Article 37 of the Constitution. We have heard the Azimio leaders going back to that particular act, which clearly states that every person has a freedom to peaceably and arm, unarmed to assemble or organize uh, to picket peacefully. But the key word there, Moshimo, is peaceably and mm. unarmed. Have those protests been peaceably and unarmed? Uh, th there has been a lot of blame game and AI with Kenya Kwanza Azimio and mm -hmm. uh, that is why I decided even to distance myself from all these sorts of things. Okay. I am not supporting Kenya Kwanza, I am not supporting Azimio mm -hmm. because I'm an advocate of peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that is why I always condemn anything that I see it's going wrong. Mm -hmm. What happened in Mulolongo was purely, purely, uh, I think that needs to be condemned with the conduct it deserves. And uh, that is why I've been agitating for dialogue. And the president himself, he knows dialogue can take us this far. But the people surrounding him, Mm -hmm. Maybe they are the issues, uh, they, they are the people who are really taking us backward. Mm -hmm. There's something, there's message Raila is trying to pass across, mm -hmm. and Raila cannot be ignored. He commanded almost a half of the fourth casted, mm -hmm. same as Ruto. Mm -hmm. So these po two powerful people in our nation, mm -hmm. they need to sit down for the betterment of the Kenyans and also for the betterment of our economy. And uh, we, we, I, I anticipate mm -hmm. chaos, violence, loss of business, destruction of properties, mm -hmm. and all sorts of mess you can think of the next two, three days. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think uh, president needs to sit down alone without listening too much on politicians, mm -hmm. especially members of parliament and senators who are firm on what they want. But people who really think of the nation first need to sit down and see the way forward. Some of the issues uh, as a leader is really raising up, like constitution of IBC, they are totally valid. Mm -hmm. We need proper discussion. Okay. High cost of living, everybody is accepting it. There's need to list and have a structured way of sorting out this matter because it's a concern for every Kenya, including the regions which voted for Kenya Kwanza. Okay. Then there is issue of, 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 of course of ethnicity. Mm -hmm. We've seen the recent appointments across all the sectors and okay. across all the government agencies. Mm -hmm. They have been inclined to two or three ethnic uh, groups and uh, we need a government that serves every Kenya. Equitable distribution of resources and so talk of everything. 
that is good for okay. the nation. Okay, Moshima, yes. we'll revisit that particular conversation. If you're just joining us, we are discussing the state of the nation and our viewpoint question this particular morning. Should the government engage the opposition in a dialogue? You can reach out to us at KBC Channel 1 at Abdi Aziz Ashim on all social media platforms. We do hope if you're just joining us, there have been calls for dialogue. Will that be the case? That is what we are asking you. Should the government engage the opposition in a dialogue? Reach out to us, join in the conversation. My guests this particular morning are none other than Honorable Charles Nguna of Mwingi West, Member of Parliament. He's also known to many quarters, alias CNN, and of course, Alenga Trusted, a political analyst who have just joined us. Maybe, Alenga, if you have been mic'd, let me come to you. Alenga, the question today is a dialogue you have been you, you have been hearing from the religious leaders from key stakeholders that it is high time that the government and the opposition should sit down should that be the case uh, first of all uh, thank you Abdiaziz, for uh, the invitation to your show and uh, us getting to meet in a new house yes. uh, Santa Sana. <laughs> thank you. i totally appreciate um i think the, the, at this particular moment, dialogue is not a discussion, it's an imperative. Okay. Um, we have to get down our high horses, those who are on the majority side of government and those who are on the minority side of government, mm -hmm. because as I have always said on this show, uh, from the 2010 constitution, our form of government changed from uh, government and opposition. We have majority and minority, mm -hmm. something that um, many people haven't gotten, and that's why we keep hearing the phrases, tuko kwa serikali, tuko wale wako kwa upinzani. Mm -hmm. you know, we have to come together at the end of the day, is just majority and minority, all forming one government. And this government has to have the um, state of Kenyans as the, their primary concern. Mm -hmm. So if there comes a moment when we do not understand each other what are the issues that we are grappling upon mm. because we are same blood we are same people we live in the same territory so we can actually understand one another it's not like we're having a foreign aggression or we are fighting with a different country mm -hmm. where you say it's difficult to even set, sit down mm -hmm. all these parties that are um, involved in the conflict are here within our borders mm -hmm. they are here within uh, reach of one another so it's just a matter of somebody giving the other a call and um, maybe what is important to discuss right now is um, why is dialogue not happening mm -hmm. that's actually the discussion for today not yeah. really whether it should or whether it should not mm -hmm. the, the dialogue the dialogue is not happening today because we have um, grandstanding from both uh, sides of the divide. Mm -hmm. We have um, people that are full of themselves, mm -hmm. people that are not willing to sit ground and listen to the other. Mm -hmm. And in totality, governance does not happen out of high-handedness and pushing things down people's throats, whether they like your face or not. Mm -hmm. Government, uh, most of the time, has to work within the framework of um, negotiations mm -hmm. and um, a clear understanding of one another. So right now, it's good for the leaders from both divides to maybe listen to one another instead of listening to the to the people around them who tell them um this this is not going to happen this this can't happen okay. those can'ts are so many at this particular moment mm -hmm. and they're the ones that are driving us down to the abyss mm -hmm. and um if you have had conversations particularly from the majority side of government they are saying something that maybe or perhaps shows that they do not understand where the country is at, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Because I have heard so many of them saying, this is a usual script, this is Rilo Dinga trying to get to power through the back door, mm -hmm. this is what and what, we know how it will end, we know how it starts. Okay, that, be that as it may, mm -hmm. but today Kenyans have legitimate issues. A okay. government was formed and it promised Kenyans tangible things. Mm -hmm. Th that is what Kenyans are looking for. Mm -hmm. Today we are not able to put food on the table, even for those who are earning. Mm -hmm. Today we are not, it is difficult to take your children to school, even baby class, mm -hmm. you know. And those are the real issues that Kenyans are having. Okay. High cost of living is a fact, it's not a creation. So if we 
fail to look at the bigger picture of why Kenyans are going to the streets and center it on one individual, Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, Raila Odinga may not be there. What will we tell Kenyans? What other excuse will we give Kenyans? Mm -hmm. Well, who will be the next boogeyman? That's the big question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe let me come to you, Moshimua. Yes. Um, is picketing the only solution? I mean, we have legislators like you who have mm. been sent there by ordinary citizens who are angered now by various issues. Should it not be the legislators representing some of these issues on the floor of the House instead uh, of going to the street? Because 23, that's a huge number. We just need to look at what happened in 2007 mm -hmm. and we need to borrow leave uh, exactly we are almost in the same situation we had in 2007. Okay. And uh, first of all, we got it wrong. There's no way a proper member of parliament and senator mm -hmm. can be put into table for negotiation. And even mm -hmm. when uh, you look at the, what happened in 2007, mm -hmm. peaceful negotiations were done by Kofi Annan. Yes. We need this caliber of people to mm -hmm. negotiate what is happening. But mm -hmm. if you put the lead of majority there and the minority oh, there, sure. these are just accidentally people who have been appointed and given the pos both the positions. Mm -hmm. They are totally into personal gratification. They are not actually thinking about the country. Mm -hmm. we, we need people with sober minds there. People who are not aligned to any coalition. Uh, that's the only way I believe we can actually have a dialogue. Otherwise, this is an exercise in futility if we are only having members of parliament and senators negotiating, members of the same. Uh, I have seen it, I've interacted with these guys, and uh, the members of parliament and senators cannot negotiate anything meaningful. Mm -hmm. So, me, I don't think where there is a way forward. Mm -hmm. We need international calibers and also religious leaders okay. to come in place and president should borrow this otherwise even if we do uh, thousands of dialogues and stuff mm -hmm. but they are being negotiated by politicians mm -hmm. we will not see anything fruitful okay. and uh, to me I think we are just wasting time okay. uh, uh, gathering these politicians to negotiate for anything. Mm -hmm. Because each and every person is representing a particular party leader mm -hmm. or a particular person, either Ruto or Raila. So I think it's not the solution so far for the country. Mm -hmm. We need to see the issue of IBC being negotiated by a very serious international figure who is known and experienced in terms of negotiation. Mm -hmm. Issue of high cost of living, we need uh, people who have got economic background okay. to advise the president or now to tackle the macroeconomic variables. We will know the interest rate, exchange rate, mm -hmm. unemployment and other stuff. But <laughs> the lead of majority, lead of minority, mm -hmm. those ones they can't help. Mm -hmm. in this nation. That is moment. interesting, Moshimo. You have yes. even read my mind. Given that yes. um, we saw religious leaders from even the Archbishop himself, Anthony Moheria, religious leaders like the Supkem leader, chairman, that is Hassan Olenado, stating that the religious leaders are ready to broker that particular conversation between the opposition and the government. Maybe, Alenga, should that be the case? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to really appreciate the line of thought from Mwishmua Charles. It's uh, really a, a great um, piece of uh, information that we need at this juncture. Mm -hmm. And um, just to echo his sentiments, right now we do not need to hear a lot from the politicians because we've been hearing from them since mm -hmm. even before the, 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 the last election. Mm -hmm. So we've been hearing a lot of politicians and it's now time to bring in people that are not uh, binary in thought, you know, uh, you're either Azimi or you're Kenya Kwanzaa, but you come to the table with impartiality and being driven by the concept of Kenya and the Kenya you want. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of people that can be able to lead a meaningful dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also 
agree with the sentiment that we can have people from different jurisdictions to come in and help us understand things because sometimes when you think internally you do not get things correctly um, you try to balkanize yourself along tribes and along um, persuasions political persuasions and you you forget to see the bigger point mm -hmm. in 2007 while we were really really sinking at a very um, no, at a nose dive mm -hmm. It took the, the intervention of people from other countries to come in and tell us, guys, you're, you're burning your country. This is not the way you should go. Okay. So from that um, pedigree of persons like uh, Kofi Annan, uh, the, 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 the late Kofi Annan and um, the Benjamin Mukapa and, and, the, and the others and Sese Ramaphosa, uh, I think Sese Ramaphosa was rejected at, 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 at the inception of the talks. Yeah. So such caliber of people helped us to understand the importance of holding a country together. Mm -hmm. Today, where we are, we are at a tipping point. Uh, the answer is there's um, statements that have been spoken and they do not mean well for our country. Mm -hmm. You remember the other day, uh, it is sad for us actually to even discuss that the president held a meeting in State House mm -hmm. and issued an order to his MPs, senators and governors mm -hmm. to equally gather people that will counter protesters in their various jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, Abdiaz is but the, situ ESA, the situation. No, it was a. It was a, stat a statement was provided to the effect, okay. and when they were asked, they said they do not contradict the statements. Mm -hmm. So, um, so if you have a situation of um, uh, citizens from different divides engaging each other in all the 291 constituencies, mm -hmm. aren't you just actually delivering the country into a civil war mm -hmm. willingly? So, that is what we. I mean, it is painful to even have to discuss, discuss such issues on TV okay. because we are asking ourselves, where did the, the construct of the constitution on the responsibilities of the president mm -hmm. as to bring together the country and promote unity and cohesion, where did those values go to? Where did those Oblig not even values, obligations by the constitution. Mm -hmm. Where did they go to? Do we really need to take these people somewhere and reteach them the constitution and reteach them their roles and reteach them what they are supposed to do? Where are we as a country? Mm -hmm. You know, it's really saddening. So at this particular juncture, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. We are, we, are, we are not thinking. Let's just say, in short, we are not thinking. Okay. We need other people to come in and help us to think mm -hmm. and help us to value our country once again. Mm -hmm. Maybe let me head back to Moshima. Moshima, what will be the middle ground? Given that you have been there, you have been sitting down with these particular leaders, what should be the middle ground that will ensure both of these leaders come to the table? Uh, if we wait for them, members of parliament and leaders in assembly I was actually to bring solutions to our problems in this country we will just be wasting our time and mm -hmm. I still maintain mm -hmm. we need people who are experienced in terms of peace breaking issues and uh, at the moment mm -hmm. if you look at the leadership in the house the likes of Kimani Chungwa, the likes of uh, Osoro. Uh, Silvanas Osoro. <laughs> These are people who are just accidentally appointed and they have found themselves in leadership. They don't have experience and even technical know how mm -hmm. to add to some of the challenges we are facing as a country. Challenges of uh, economic crisis, challenges of leadership crisis, challenges of many other issues and we need people who have been there, who have seen and I am not taking you too far. We need to see what happened in 2007, mm -hmm. we implement the same and we will have peace and prosperous nation. Mm -hmm. Issues to deal with the economy, we need a very experienced uh, group of people. If you look at what happened in 2007 to 2013, 13, okay. when you had the best government in place of Kalonzo Musioka and Mwai Kibaki mm -hmm. leading the nation. Every Kenyan was happy and uh, you could see we had uh, the likes of Michuk, the likes of uh, David Muraria, and these are the people who have been there, they have seen and they 
I experience uh, in terms of uh, both economically and politically, in terms of handling the issues. And these are the people we need to see. But uh, appointing people just because of the political inclination uh, to sort out the mess in our country will not heal the nation and will not fix the issues of the economy. So present should look for experienced people in a certain field without necessarily uh, asking himself who did he support, who is this person, did he? but what e expertise, what kind of skills, what kind of experience can that person bring into the government and into the people of the Republic of Kenya mm -hmm. to fix the matters of economy and matters of social uh, economic crisis. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll be coming to you back, Moshimo, but Alenga, let me head over to you. You have cited the Constitution. Article 37 of the Constitution clearly states that everybody has uh, freedom to peacefully assemble or picket peacefully. The word there underlined is peacefully and unarmed. Has that been the case so far? Uh, Abdi Aziz, uh, we, we need to interrogate the the freedom to demonstrate from um, an international perspective as, as well as uh, in our as captured in our municipal laws mm -hmm. um, it is not only Kenya or the Constitution of Kenya that um, gives right to protest picket and demonstrate and generally the freedom to assemble you know mm -hmm. but we, is, this is equally captured in um, article uh, 21 of the uh, international con co covenant on uh, on civil and political rights mm -hmm. it is uh, captured in the um, african charter african charter on uh, peoples and human rights mm -hmm. article 11 and all these are uh, international instruments that have been ratified by kenya mm -hmm. so in the view of the legal uh, local standard of these uh, demonstrations and protests kenya must well understand that um, it's not general it's not really kenya that requires people or, or gives right to people but this is an internationally um, accepted uh, norm and uh, it has been institutionalized mm -hmm. in weighty international instruments um, again when we ask about when we talk about article 37 we have over exaggerated the position of the police in terms of in, in, in view of Article 37, mm -hmm. um, the police do not have permission to grant to people to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Ideally, when what we... What about public, the Public Order Act, Section 5? Uh, the Public Order Act cannot supersede the Constitution. Mm -hmm. The Constitution remains supreme. Mm -hmm. And even in the Public Order Act, the police are mandated to, to be notified for purposes of yes. providing security. Mm -hmm. They are not supposed to be notified for purposes of giving permission. Mm -hmm. So it is very unconstitutional, illegal, and um, unheard of for the police boss to say, I have, there will be no protests. Mm -hmm. He has no permission to give uh, to give to protesters or not. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Minister for Interior has no permission, you know, he has no power to give permission for people to demonstrate or not to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. His is to ensure that while that happens, law is not broken. Mm -hmm. And um, we have seen very many times that we have protesters who go to the streets and protest and sing and dance and carry uh, placards and then they go home mm -hmm. but the moment the police come in things change because immediately the police come in they start throwing tear gas they start running uh, all over and hitting people mm -hmm. and these are not um these are not uh, these are not mortal uh, uh, immovable objects if you antagonize the public they are also going to respond and what do they have what is the, what is the nearest thing they run to it's the stones because you you're pushing them you're throwing tear gas at them we saw what happened in the slums of madare when raila passed there the other day mm -hmm. people were tear gassed small children babies were could not breathe in the houses we saw what happened in kibera even a, an infant died from suffocation from the tear gas mm -hmm. so if this is what the police have this is only what the police have been taught in the room and books of uh, uh, quelling demonstration, then we really have an issue with how we prepare our security forces in order to uh, countenance with the public. Um, Abdiaziz, we cannot say 
we sit here and work and give government taxes so that they can buy bullets to kill our own people. I suppose that those bullets are to protect us from foreign aggression. But when we start pointing guns at our own citizens, how, what do we expect? We have come to a situation where we're even arguing with the United Nations observation on human rights in the demonstration. We are writing letters that are very full of emotions to the UN, surely. Um, a body like the UN Human Rights uh, 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 Watchdog has all the epistemic uh, largesse to observe whether human rights was adhered to or not. Mm -hmm. So if we find ourselves arguing with everyone in the space that tells us you're not managing protests in the right way, then there's a problem in how this government is trying to operate. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you for a fact, Kenyans have been here before. It's not a new thing. And perhaps those of us who, were, who saw the second liberation, we saw the, the same, same, similar things happened. We had, people had to die, people had to push, people had to be hit. You know, we saw very gory pictures of um, even uh, the, 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 um, the, the archbishop who was being beaten harmlessly he's not carrying anything but he was beaten on the streets thoroughly just for us to have multipartism you can imagine a simple thing like just to allow us have more than one party turning up for elections we had to sweat we had to die we had to release blood mm -hmm. so how is this country operating that even the smallest things you can't give to citizens mm -hmm. even just the the permission to go ahead and say we are not we are not happy we are displeased with this i mean if if somebody is just carry, coming to the protest carrying a placard and saying the price of unga is high how is that vi visualized as a weapon by the police so it should be met back with tear gas and live bullets maybe to play the devil's advocate here lenga the police are arguing on their side when you pick it there is no problem but the problem comes when you start violence looting that is where they draw that is where the straw breaks the camel's neck. Let me ask you, Abiyazis. Mm -hmm. There's a day, um, this comedian Eric Omondi, with a group of about 50 men, mm -hmm. came to parliament there, yeah. and they sat on the ground. But they were thoroughly beaten mm -hmm. you know, by the police. Mm -hmm. Wh what had they done? What weapons were they holding? Mm -hmm. So is there a simple protest that can ever happen in this country mm -hmm. where citizens are just allowed to march and even when that happens, when you march in a procession and the police are watching, it is easy for the police to pick the wrongdoers. Mm. But when the police come in and throw tear gas and everybody starts running helter-skelter, mm. that is where people get an opportunity to loot because at the end of the day, you will not say who did what. Mm -hmm. But if we are civilized enough to watch demonstrators move across the streets while the police barricade and watch them, it is easy if somebody gets out of that, uh, that movement and goes to a shop, he can be clearly arrested. But when you create that chaos, that mayhem, mm -hmm. I mean, what do you expect? Mm -hmm. People, will, st people will, will start running all over like headless chicken, mm -hmm. and that is where crime now comes in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Moshimo, you want to join on that? You wanted uh, to say something? Uh, the, the, the possibly. We need uh, trained personnel so now to do demonstration. Mm -hmm. Recently, I have observed that our police force, they still need lessons and well, I would be recommending to the IG when you will be doing the training, uh, when you will be recruiting the new policemen force, actually officers, mm -hmm. we need to introduce that topic, that, that discussion of how to do a demonstration need to be included in police lessons. So far, I have not seen instead of police protecting the properties like look at what happened in Lolongo. Yes. where were the policemen and they knew mm -hmm. very well destruction property destruction is going to happen instead of chasing the people parade yourself along the properties mm -hmm. protect properties mm -hmm. instead of chasing the people yeah. what they are doing just protect properties and let them walk wherever they want to go. You can do anything with this new constitution we have, and it is one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. We don't even need to mutilate or to add even a comma in this constitution. Mm -hmm. It's so good, properly guided, everything is in place. So what we need is a police officer protecting properties, but not 
throw the canisters and uh, live bullets to the people. So, to me, I think we don't have enough experience in terms of the uh, elderly experiences when it comes to police force, mm -hmm. yes. So, that is my ambition, and I think it is totally in order. Mm -hmm. Mm. And of course, um, as you're just joining us, we are discussing should the government engage the opposition in a dialogue? Of course, you can reach out to us in our various social media platforms at KBC Channel 1 at Abdi Aziz Ashim. That is Moshimua Honorable Charles Nguna as well as Alenga Trostat, a political analyst. Of course, there have been clamor for dialogue. Will that be the case? We're trying to devise ways on what middle ground should the opposition and the government find to, of course, listen to each other and also the public service governance will be also touching upon the demonstration that is, is yet to start um, from tomorrow till Friday and of course that is the focal point of our conversation at this particular morning and finally the National Construction Authority compliance a function that will be in winter. Those are the diary as you can see in our screens of course our reporters are stationed in various parts of the country. They'll be bringing us up to speed with those reactions but our main focal point this particular morning is that uh, should the government engage the opposition in a dialogue at this particular tipping point we would like to see if the two um, that is the government and the opposition will come to the table you can join in the conversation of course through our social media platforms at kbc channel one at abdi aziz hashim my guests are all here alenga trostad a political analyst we also have Hon robert charles nguna of mwingi west member of parliament and of course joining us is none other than advice mundalo national youth chair of the jubilee party now let me come to you advice given that your name already is advice what advice can you give the government and the opposition in terms of dialogue you <laughs> see the situation that we're in right now sure is it high time that the two come to the table first of all good morning abdi aziz good, uh, good morning to kenyans mm -hmm. i think uh, as per your question uh, first of all we must agree that there is a problem in the country mm -hmm. and uh, uh, almost everyone is right with their uh, with what they are calling for actually mm -hmm. because the cost of living is skyrocketing it mm -hmm. is extremely high mm -hmm. and uh, people cannot afford basic things food cannot be on the table of Kenyans as it stands today and uh, it's also true that government has really tried to have that mitigation measure in terms of trying to have food production mm -hmm. but the tragedy about all this is that at the end of the day Kenyans need food now mm -hmm. people need to survive now because you know the what what we are planting and stuff cannot be able to be harvested and consumed on the same day mm -hmm. but then when we look at uh, the, the the hard talk from both uh, opposition and government mm -hmm. it is only escalating the temperatures in the country mm -hmm. my i would agree with the religious leaders when they say that let everybody first of all stand down mm -hmm. let everybody first of all be able to accept the realities as they are today Remember, Abdi Aziz, uh, last year, uh, during the Jubilee administration, we were able to really explain why the cost of living is high following the matters of the war in, uh, in, in Ukraine and Russia, the after effects of the COVID. And this we did together uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Musioka, and the current uh, leadership of Azimio. Mm -hmm. And together we told the country that the cost of living is high not because of uh, wrongful administration we told the people that it is because of these effects that this is like this today mm -hmm. now why somebody would run away from what was just explained less than six months uh, about a year ago is again something that points to the reality that our country is heavily political that we give explanations when they are favorable to us at that particular time mm -hmm. but when that explanation ceases to be favorable for our politics at that time we run away from the explanation mm -hmm. and now because we are staring at a situation where what uh, the deputy president then said about the cost of living is now what the opposition is saying and that is what it was opposing at the time mm -hmm. and what the administration is saying today is what the oppos is, is what government was saying at that time but that was not good for politics at that time mm -hmm. so it really paints a picture where you have to understand that Kenyans have to really get to this realization that at the end of the day, most of the politicians have very little interest of the people. Most of the politicians have very little interest with the reality of the solutions. Mm -hmm. What matters is mostly the political optics at that time. 
because the problems we have today Aziz, have not we have not woken up into these problems mm -hmm. yes they have escalated but they have been there mm -hmm. and we have seen explanations being made at that time that this is because of this this is because of the war in uh, ukraine and russia mm -hmm. this is because of this and we tried to make kenyans understand why the situation is as, as it is mm -hmm. so first of all let us be able to have our facts right and let us agree that this we are not in this situation courtesy of any particular person mm -hmm. let the administration not blame the former and blame the handshake and let no opposition not try and uh, position it in a manner that is beneficial to their politics today mm -hmm. so let us first of all have conversations that are very forward looking the president formed the bipartisan committee mm -hmm. and was supposed to have a conversation there and that is supposed to be a committee that is should have a conversation it is constitutional it is parliamentary these are members of parliament mm -hmm. so we can be sure of the end game of these talks now what would be the end game of demonstrations is what i'm not very sure mm -hmm. because after you take the people to the streets i don't see how that reduces the cost of living mm -hmm. in as much as it is a constitutional right in as much as it is uh, enshrined in the constitution but at the end of the day we must also be able to do things that have an end game uh, we, we are staring at a situation where I was uh, <coughs> looking at the news and the number of people who died courtesy of the previous demonstration has now gotten to about 20. Mm -hmm. Now, those are 20 lives that we will not be able to reclaim. Whether we solve this crisis or not, those lives will not be reclaimed. At the end of the day, if at the end of the day, both uh, the opposition and government will have a sit down and move the country forward, then the earlier the better because the lives that are continuing to be lost cannot be recovered and everybody is blaming the other about the lives of kenyans and i don't know why it is unfortunate uh, mm -hmm. that in this country we can have as many as 20 people especially and those who are 20 young people dead but we just talk the, to talk about them as statistics and numbers about demonstrations and then we want to look at another demonstration and then look at others as statistics we have to reduce the, the this idea of looking at people's lives as a mere statistic mm -hmm. it is not a mere statistic okay. and therefore we must be able to look at is there an end game the more we take the people uh, to the street the more the young people die the more because most of these people who are actually dying mm -hmm. are the young people of this country they are the people who are supposed to sustain the future of this country mm -hmm. now the more they die is it the more we get a solution the more we're able to go to these streets is it the more we get a solution mm -hmm. we have been to these streets before how will the cost of living help that these demonstrations how will they uh, help in the matters of uh, recalling the finance bill which which uh, uh, which the opposition is claiming should be recalled mm -hmm. remember abdiaziz we are looking at a situation where one person or key omtata went to court on matters of the finance bill mm -hmm. And the finance bill was put on hold by the courts. Okay. It didn't need him to do any demonstration. No one died. No one was put on the street. Okay. There was no drama around it. Okay. So let the opposition also look at having practical solutions and not just political optics. Okay. Because what is happening is mostly political optics and mm -hmm. not, no, no interest in the reality of the solutions. Mm -hmm. the, the, the finance bill was a matter about parliament. Okay. Did the opposition whip parliamentarians mm -hmm. to vote? Because they say that we have the numbers in azimio we have always said we have the numbers in azimio okay. did we whip our members of parliament to vote mm -hmm. we did not okay. and then we want to take kenyans on the street mm -hmm. i think that is not very very fortunate okay let me allow mushimo and mm. mushimo just a minute let me allow you to marinate on that do join the conversation but before we head over to that particular break do remember that the point of view of question this particular morning is that should the government engage the opposition in a dialogue talk to us on our social media platforms at kbc channel one at abdi Aziz. Don't go too far.